Hey guys, today I'm going to cover the very basics of update suppression. I did a video a while ago covering some update suppression, but I feel like it's time to make an updated video on it. I have unlisted the old video, but the link will still be in the description. And before I start, I would recommend watching XCOM's video on update suppression. It will be linked in the description, and he goes way more in depth than I will in this video. Okay, so first off, I will explain what update suppression actually is. Update suppression is where we are able to prevent the game from processing certain block updates, allowing us to create block states that shouldn't normally be possible. Essentially what we're doing here is causing a load of updates all in the same tick, which causes a stack overflow. The game can only process a certain number of updates every tick, and if that limit is reached then the game will stop processing updates. Usually a stack overflow would result in a crash, but if a player interaction caused that update, then the game will not crash. There are different types of updates, and this is very important while update suppressing. And while update suppressing, you will want to be causing player updates, as this won't crash the game. These are things like placing blocks, breaking blocks, hitting this note block, and even changing the delay on this repeater. But anything else that isn't direct player interaction will cause a crash. For example, this lever. Even though I, the player, am flicking it, it is passing through this repeater and therefore is no longer a player interaction. This goes for anything to do with tile ticks, such as observers, comparators, redstone torches, and a lot more. XCOM explains more about this in his video if you want to know more. In our case, we are using budded rails to cause these updates. What this means is we have a lot of rails that are powered when they shouldn't be. So to demonstrate this, when I pull this lever, you can see that this rail here is not powered, even though it technically should be. And this is because of how rails update. Because this redstone block is powering all of these rails, when I power this rail again, it doesn't send out block updates to its neighbours. But if we manually update it, you can see that all of these instantly turn on. This also works the other way around, so if all of these are powered, then we remove the power here. They are all budded, meaning they are powered when they shouldn't be. And if we place a block next to them, they will all instantly turn off. And this is what we use for update suppression. There are also different ways we can bud. For example, the detector rail bud, which lets us bud almost anything, which is really useful in some situations. So if I power and depower this piston, you can see that this note block has the powered true tag, even though there's nothing powering it. When I place a block next to it, it will update and realize that it shouldn't be powered. We can also use this to bud redstone dust, rails, and most notably, bud TNT in the off state, which is what we use for TNT duping. This update suppressor is a modified version of Punch's 6 game tick update suppressor, which will be linked in the description. His update suppressor uses dust budding, as I just showed, to relay updates, but it can sometimes be locational because of redstone dust update order. This update suppressor has a 7 game tick reset and is all rail update based, and shouldn't crash loop. So, to turn it on, we just hit this lever, and then hit this note block. Now it's on, we can update suppress, and to turn it off, we just hit this lever again and hit the note block. And if we relog, you should be able to see that all of these rails are off, meaning the update suppressor is off. Before I show some things that you can use the update suppressor for, it is important to understand the update path. The game will check for updates in a certain order. West, East, Down, Up, North, South. So for example, this block has a button West, a sign facing North into the update suppressor, and a button facing South. So if I were to break it, it would check west first, break this button, there's nothing on the east, there's nothing below it, there's nothing above it, then it would go north, break this sign, and then update suppress, and it would skip south, because it, the updates got suppressed. So when I break this, everything should break apart from this button. Portal slicing is mostly what people use update suppression for, and there are multiple ways of slicing a portal. This is the method that I used in my EOL Witch Farm tutorial and is very simple. The first block we break is this obsidian here, we replace it with a powered rail, place a redstone block at the back, 
So technically this rail should be powered, it just hasn't received an update. And now all we have to do is break the subsidian block. Now portal blocks update slightly differently than your normal update path. And they always update horizontally before traveling vertically. So when I break this, it should just travel horizontally, update this rail and go straight into the update suppressor, creating our slice portal. The other way of suppressing a portal is to have it directly next to the bud line. If I break this block at the top, it will travel horizontally, go down one, travel horizontally, down one. When it hits this portal block, it will update suppress and it will leave a one by one, like so. And then we can remove the city in here, grab a sign, and voila, we have our one by one portal. I showed before how we can bud note blocks, and this can be useful for situations like this, where we cannot use rails, as in this case, we cannot place rails on the void. So we have a budded node block here that is in the power true state. And we have a portal. And when I place a block here, it should get update suppressed. Now to pull this off, all we have to do is turn off the update suppressor. Power our node block, power our rail, make sure that it's all updated. Turn on our update suppressor. Depower our note block, depower our rail, now these are all budded, and it should be on, so now we can place a block next to this note block and it will get update suppressed. Awesome. We can also create soulbound chests, and there are many side effects of this, one of which being the fact that we can't access any GUIs, and another being if you are soulbound and you leave the game, you will crash the server even with update suppression crash fix. I will link Process's video about this in the description if you're interested to learn more about soulbound chests. We can also use update suppression to create blocks that are in invalid positions. One example of this being useful is being able to place wither roses on top of nether bricks, which will only allow wither skeletons to spawn. We can also use update suppression to create control crashes, as I mentioned before, anything that isn't a player interaction will cause a crash. Another side effect of update suppression is that updates get processed before items, meaning we can duplicate blocks. Keep in mind that this does not duplicate MBT data. So for example, if I were to place a diamond block here, it looks like that it left my inventory, but it's just a ghost item. So I can carry on placing. This also works with shulker boxes, but as I said, it does not save MBT data. So, as you can see, they're just normal white, nothing in them. Now, to mine these diamond blocks, you have to turn off your update suppressor, give it a last update, and then when we mine these, you see that we now have more diamond blocks. That about wraps it up for this video, I will include a world download in the description and thank you for watching, see you guys next time.